I always say it's like doing therapy while being hugged by everyone in the world who loves you in a bathtub full of puppies licking your face. It's not like a party. It's not like you take this and go to a rave. There is therapy. It is, it is genuinely a lot of hard work because you're going through all the, the worst parts of your life. Got blown up in a porter john in Iraq. Uh, came back, had several issues with PTSD for about eight years. Had five suicide attempts. Uh, um, hospitalized by, at the VA. Before I went through the therapy, I assumed I'd be dead in, in, on any given day. The biggest difference is the fact that you know the current Western medicine therapy model is the fifty-minute therapist hour. So before you even get close to any sort of trauma or comfort level. It's, well, that's all the time we have for today. Let's take it up here next week. This is an eight-hour deep dive therapy session. And the fact that, well, you take MDMA and you're under the influence of a psychedelic for the entire eight hours. Is it like gradual rise and gradual fall? Usually it's waves where you start to notice something. Sometimes people report a lot of thoughts. The MDMA builds trust with the therapists around you. Um, it also mutes the part of your brain that is the fear response that causes panic attacks and, and, and those feelings that stop you from, from, from going forward. Then you just open up and just start talking. I'm thinking a lot about <laughs> Here's one of my guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He lost his leg. Part of him getting hurt was my fault. phase two clinical trials, those 103 participants who, um, you know, over 50% no longer had PTSD. These were people who had tried several different medications and had tried psychotherapy and EMDR and prolonged exposure, the, the things that we consider the gold standard of treatment for, for PTSD, and they hadn't worked, but this did. The MDMA used in the, the clinical trials is um, made specifically for the um, for the clinical trials in a lab sanctioned by the FDA and the DEA, and it's monitored at every step of the process. So it is really pure MDMA, um, the same that you you know if you were to get a, a drug from a drug company. Research studies um, in you know a controlled therapeutic setting, we haven't really seen very serious adverse events. They're uncommon. Um, they're non-life threatening uh, risks, and um, more commonly, they cause like an increase in your heart rate, your blood pressure, the body temperature. Like these are all things that are transiently affected, like with the MDMA. It's um, you know really deep and meaningful. Um, experience for them and not something that they would consider, you know, a party experience or something that they would want to kind of go through. This is, they're experiencing real healing. And um, I think that that helps mitigate some of that risk of dependency as well. I didn't realize how much energy I expended on a daily basis just existing. 
um, until it's all gone. And now, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about things like what my dream job would be or, you know, my my stepson's future and being around for it. The, idea, the, the simple concept that I will be here in 10 or 15 years. When we signed up, we, we, we gladly signed up knowing we may be killed in combat. We just never thought that we'd be asked to give our life for our country far from a battlefield here at home. And, and it's very true. We, we had, we've lost more people to suicide due to the past 20 years of conflict than we have lost in combat. And each and every one of those people did that because of their service. Hopefully somebody will watch this video right now and think, you know what, this is coming in a year or two. I'm gonna hold on a little bit longer because I, I hope that the MDMA therapy becomes that light at the end of the tunnel for everyone out there. So at least they keep fighting.